Speaker. The guest speaker, Pastor Crown Akurienne from South Dakota. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. So glad to join you again. This is my second time fellowshipping with you. And um, it's a great honor and privilege. It's a great day. We know that mothers are so special. And they deserve all the honor we will give them today. You are saying that your face is not coming out completely. Oh, my face? Can you go back a little? But can you hear me now with yeah. that? Okay. Okay. Let me see what's going on. Okay, oh. you can see me well. Yes. I was dancing before, so I, I didn't know I shifted it. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we praise your holy name. We honor and adore you. The Lord God Almighty, the El Shaddai, Adonai Elohim, we bless you this day. For this is the day and this is the week you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Daddy, I surrender all to you. I have no word of my own. I'm just a donkey that you will use, O oh God, this day to glorify your name in our midst. Holy Spirit, come and take preeminence in all we do today. Let them hear your voice and not my voice. Let your word go forth and heal and deliver and comfort and encourage and bind every broken heart for your name's sake. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Sorry about that. Listen, mothers, I will say what we normally say in Igbo. I know we're not all Hebrews, but I will say Ndine Mama. Ndine Mama, Isokwa. Ndine Mazo Numao, Ugobezi Nono. Ugobezi Nono. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that mothers 
as I said before, so many times we don't really give them the honor due unto them. I will start by introducing myself. I'm a mother. God bless me with six lovely children, two boys and girls, and four grandchildren. And this day, I mean, we said that every day is Mother's Day anyway, but today, as the world, America brought it out for us to dedicate that for Mother's Day. I want us to have a more of interaction. The way God is leading me, I have no word of my own but his word. A mother is like a, a mighty house furnished with so many things, both expensive things and cheap things, but everything that makes a house. You know, when you come to a house, you have different rooms. And in each room, you furnish it according to you, the way you want it or whatever. A mother is like that. It's mothers that build a house. It's mother, it, when you have the understanding of motherhood. I want every mother to know that motherhood is a ministry. I will say it again. Motherhood is a ministry. Amen? That is the greatest ministry God has given to any man. Motherhood. Why do I say it's a ministry? For every child that you have, God give you, is the way you nurture that child that we determine tomorrow. And we know that every child is a beginning of a new generation. Every child is beginning of a new generation. So mother's job is so big and so complicated. And uh, every child we know today, whatever they are, whether in education, whether in business, whatever field they find themselves, it didn't start by that. It is from the very minute God placed them inside their mother's womb. Because when a mother is pregnant, the moment a woman recognized that she is pregnant. She stopped being herself. She began to live for that baby in the womb. I will explain myself. She will stop eating certain things that is not good for that baby. Each stage of pregnancy from the first day you recognize you're pregnant to the third month, there are things you won't eat. There are things you will not drink. It's not because you don't love them. It's not because you don't want them. But because you know that it can cause miscarriage or deformity for that baby. So that mother, no matter what is going on, she will not. It's a big sacrifice. That's why I said, it is from the very minute that child is being placed by God in the womb that mother starts nurturing that child. And when the child is born, it's a different ball game. So mothers, a mother is a, is a, a prayer warrior. Every mother, even the one that goes, doesn't go to church, they pray to God for their children so bad because they believe in a God, only that they go through drunk dog, a God. But when we come to, let's focus on the Christian mothers. There is no person, not even a pastor, that prays as much as any Christian mother do pray. They pray day and night for their children, for their husband, they do, they do not even care where they are. The moment they notice something is going wrong, they start praying to God. And I can tell you that mothers have special place in the heart of God. 
there is some connection that is so special between a mother and God. And funny enough, even though we may be wife, anyway, I'm a widow, so but I'm using widows, so I was a wife before, you know, even when you, your husband become your firstborn so many times, because we, for example, we Nigerians, I don't wanna use the whole Africa, let's focus on Nigeria we came from. We know there is this disadvantage that when a son is born, it is the, this belief in our culture to make that boy to be strong. We even suppress them from expressing their feelings. Oh, why are you crying? You are a boy, you sh boys don't cry. You're a man, man don't cry. Why are you behaving like a woman? And it affects them so much. Even when they grow up, they don't know how to express their feelings anymore. And the thing affects them too when they get married. And you know we women, we are bundled of feelings. We are highly emotional. God gave it to us because of having children, to have that emotion, to be able to take care of kids, feel that pain, that soft heart. So when, when a man is married to a woman, because of the way he was brought up, he doesn't know how to express that much love or caring, but that doesn't mean he doesn't love the wife. But just that he doesn't know how to, because that wasn't our culture. You know, Western culture, they don't have that problem at all. And it causes so many problems in marriages today. But we do not understand it wasn't their fault anyway. They can't give what they don't have. So when a woman is married, the husband becomes the first son anyway even before the woman begin to have children. That caring that that man doesn't have from beginning, the wife begin to do what? Bring that. So a mother is not just a prayer warrior, but a fighter, fights a great battle, both spiritual and natural. For example, if the child come home from school and complain about teacher did this or that, most of the time, the fathers don't usually go, but the mother immediately will grab that child and start going down the next day to school to go and confront the teacher to know why you should treat my daughter, my, my son this way. Mothers, you know what I'm saying. Let's forget about America for now because the system in America is different, but America still do the same thing, you know. Most of the time they do it by phone calls. And a mother can never be intimidated by the size of a person that challenge his, her son or her daughter. There's this mother thing that God has placed in a woman way before you become a mother. You have that fighting spirit. When a mother is a nurse, a mother is a doctor. When a child is sick, before she will go to hospital, she have tried her best. She knows every little thing she can do. And if it's in the night, that mother will not sleep again all night watching that child to make sure the fever is not too much. It will carry that child and sleep, you know, by the side of that child. A mother may be hungry, but will not show it. As long as the food she has in the house is not much, she will deny herself that food to make sure that her children we have enough to eat. And she will pretend she will not allow the children to know that she is dying of hunger herself. And 
mothers are very selfless human beings. They never care about themselves. If only we will understand the sacrifices that the mothers pays both for their children and for their household, we will appreciate them more. That's why God Almighty doesn't joke with prayers of the mothers. And that's why every child, no matter your age, you should not disrespect your mother. Because if a mother cry bitterly against you before God, you are in trouble. There's a big cause. In the whole Bible, we know <laughs> that is even in the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother so that you will live long. Yeah. God does not play with that. A mother, when a mother is confused about what is going on with her child, she doesn't just sit quiet. She will do whatever it takes to figure it out. She will go wherever extra much she will do to figure that out. I call mothers detectives. <laughs> There's this instinct, God placed in a mother, like, you know, CID, as we call it in Nigeria, or FBI or CIA. A mother had that feeling in, he, in her. Something is wrong with this child. This child is not behaving well. This child is acting up. This child is kind of hiding something. Every mother here knows that. You have it. This is God-giving gift. And so many mothers have used it well and prevented so many things. So today, I want us to share something. God gave me a few things. I will try my best to make it happen, to bring it all. In the book of Genesis we read today, in the Genesis chapter 21, the story about uh, Abraham sending away Ishmael and the mother, Hagar the concubine. So many times when I was very, very um, young in spirit, I questioned God a lot about that story. It troubles me. I wasn't too happy with God about it. So God opened my eyes to see what really happened. In the book of Genesis 21, I want us to notice something. I want to read from verse 8. He said, the child grew and was weaned, talking about Isaac. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The problem here is this. There is something that happened because Sarah didn't just get up and say that. As a mother, that mother who the spirit that I said, that discernment spirit that God placed in mothers was at work in Sarah. See, when you hear this story, you will say, why in the world will she say such a thing? Because she was the one who made Abraham and uh, Hagar to bring forth this child. Why is she now just because she had a baby now, he, she has her own son. She now ordering this man to drive away this innocent boy. That's how I used to think about that. See, God spoke to me concerning that. You see, Abraham 
had Isaac, uh, Ishmael when Abraham was 86 years old. Abraham had Isaac when he was 100 years old. So check, think about it. Which when Isaac was born. So if Sarah has been that bad, he, she's been living with this guy, loving so much. He, he, she was like a grandmother. So is it really because she now have her own son that she want this boy to go? No. We have the answer in the Bible here. Verse nine is the main point. Verse nine said, but Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. This man was uh, a teenager. And the winning, like how we do out in service in Nigeria, when a woman gives birth a child, you don't just take the child to church, not like we do in America. And back home in Nigeria, you have to stay home for about three months before you even go to church. Thanksgiving, we call it. But in their culture here, what we saw here, it wasn't three months. It was when Sarah weaned Isaac, when she stopped breastfeeding Isaac. And we know then, if we calculate it with our own Nigerian system, in olden days, our grandmothers, they win child, it takes about two, two to three years they breastfeed before they win a child. So you can imagine, it's not like Isaac was just born today or one month ago and Sarah requested for Abraham to do what? To drive him away. No. Ishmael said something. Unfortunately, what he said was not written. But you and I know that when the word mocking, anytime you hear somebody mocking is a horrible thing. It's never a good thing. I don't know what he said. Maybe he's saying something like, oh, I'm the firstborn, I own the, I have no idea. I don't add, I don't remove. The Bible said that Sarah saw Ishmael. You, you just picture it like this. You having all this name ceremony, people were, and Abraham was a very rich man. So you can imagine the kind of personalities that were around in the party. The whole village, especially having a child at that very age, Sarah and Abraham, old age. That would be a extraordinary party. And this guy called Ishmael, teenager, came out and began to mock him mock Sarah. I don't know what she said, but it must be horrible. Whatever that can make Sarah to demand that this child must be driven away from this home. You will say, why do God accepted that? Because Abraham was troubled about it. Abraham wasn't it's like, what in the world? This is my first son. Why? But remember, Abraham didn't ask God anything about it. He was just troubled. But God spoke to Abraham. And what did God say to Abraham? <laughs> that was where the problem we having about this issue. When Abraham was still crying out, you know, feeling bad, how is he going to reply to Sarah for what to such a demand? That's a very wicked thing. I respect Sarah for everything, but this one, uh-uh. This is horrible. And God spoke to Abraham in verse 12. Let's say from verse 11. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. Verse 12 says, but 
whenever you hear Beth. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your maid servant. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will still make that lad a, a nation. So you can imagine the shock in Abraham's head. Abraham will be so shocked to hear God say, yeah, listen to Sarah. She's right. Drive that boy away. Now let us reason here with Sarah, with God. Could it be that the instinct in Sarah was that Isaac being a small child, maybe two years, three years old, and Ishmael being 14 or 15, whatever, we know that he is above 14, but let's say he's even 14. Could it be that if, if Sarah doesn't take this action, that what happened between Ken and Abel will happen? That Ishmael will kill because he's enjoyed being only child, being spoiled by Abraham and Sarah and the mother for that 14 good years, even more than that, if we do the math well. But like I said, let's just talk on 14 for now. And now he has seen a rival and you know what jealous can do. Jealous can destroy. It was the same thing that happened between Ken and Abel. They of the same mother, Ken and Abel. But this one is not even of the same mother, which is even more dangerous. Could it be? That's why what Sarah felt. Remember, we are talking about the instinct that God placed in a mother when it comes to her children. Because if that instinct wasn't right, God wouldn't have supported. Remember again, Abraham did not pray and ask God, what do I do? He was just troubled for what the demand that Sarah has placed upon him. And God spoke immediately and said, yeah, Sarah was right. Listen, do whatever, what, what, what he, she said is right. Take them away, don't worry about them, I'll take care of that boy and the mother. And Abraham, the moment he heard from God, confirming he did it. So mothers, what do we learn from this? To listen more to that inner voice in us is a great gift of God when it comes to our children. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that a mother can make things happen in the family. A mother can sense that there is danger. No matter how far away your children are, whether they're at school, there is something that will hit you. You begin to think about that child. You feel so restless. What do you do? That is the instinct God has placed in you. You begin to pray. I remember when my kids were still in college, um, about three of them were in the same school, the same college. And I came back from work, I was sleeping. And I had this crazy dream where I have some eggs in a basket. And all of a sudden something hit me and the eggs were falling, but I was able to grab it, it didn't fall. I woke up immediately, I started praying in tongues. I started praying over my children, I started praying. Within three hours, I received a phone call that two of my daughters had a serious accident. Actually, the car was damaged 100%, but nothing happened to two of them. So this is the power of the prayer of a mother. Every one of you have it. God honors you. Don't take it lightly. God spoke to me when I was getting ready for this program. 
He said that if every mother we use, when we talk about faith, we mothers, you don't know you have the greatest faith in the world. I'm like, God, what are you talking about? He said, yeah. He asked me a question. He said, there are so many women that died during childbirth, but does this stop any other woman from getting pregnant? I said, no. He said, that's faith. Even though she went for the funeral service or she heard about the person that died, it doesn't stop that person. All she wants is to do what? To have baby. Even when you're a, a new wife, you've heard all the story about how painful it is to go through pregnancy or labor, whatever. You will say, oh my God, this is serious. But it doesn't stop that woman. All she wants is to have her children, her baby. God said, that's the greatest faith. So if mothers can, every woman can use the same faith in every other thing, faith is so easy. If we can use the same faith we use in having babies. And many years ago, when I was still raising my kids, the organ out of the house. So that's why I say many years ago, I told you I have six children. There's this one of them. She have this character I do not understand. If I caution her the same way I caution the senior ones, it's trouble. She doesn't take anything serious. It bothers me so much. And I begin to cry to God, being a single mother. I'm like, God, this is America. I don't even know. I can't beat this child. I will go to jail. I don't know what in the world I'm troubled. To my greatest surprise, God spoke to me. God said to me, your problem is because you are treating them all the same. Have you taken time to study every one of them that they, each of them have a different personality? This is what God said to me that evening. I'm like, huh? He said, yeah. Because the same way you, you treat her or you caution her, the same way you caution her senior, the two that seniored her. But how, if you can take time and study her, and find out her personality and treat her according to her personality. It will be different. I say, God help me. I begin to monitor. And I notice that even though they are all my children, but one thing she don't like is if she do anything bad, she doesn't want me to caution her in front of her siblings. She want me to talk to her privately. When I begin to do that, everything changed. Mothers, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. It doesn't matter how many children you have. It was an eye opener for me when God came in and told me that. I never know. So no matter how many children you have, take time to study each character and know how to talk to every one of them. Another thing God let me know when I was raising my children, it's not to hide my weaknesses. When I'm wrong, I should accept I'm wrong so that they learn from my mistake. I should be an open book to them because children doesn't learn from what you tell them. They learn from what they see you do. You may preach all the good sermon to them, it doesn't enter much, but what they see you do is what they learn. You are the pastor, you are the teacher, you are the doctor, whatever it is, the counselor, that's what a mother is. So that they will have that confidence to confide in you and say things to you. So mothers, when I was preparing, God said to me, there are some mothers in this place and people who will watch this letter. They have serious pain, broken heart in them. They are going through a lot. They are so confused. They feel so helpless. But God says, I should tell you, you should not let go of who you are. You should come back to the table. I don't know what that means. I'm saying what God said. You should come back to the table. What table is that? How you started with God from the beginning when you were having that child? God showed me 
a secret when my kids were young, how to pray for my children. I never had it before. I never known anybody taught it before. It was all God. I told you that the other time I preached. My journey with God is so personal. He's my teacher, not a pastor, not Bible school. He is the one guiding me. He taught me how to pray for my children. He said, and I want to teach every mother that today, because I started doing it and it began to work. Hey, when God says something, it has to come to pass, right? So he said to me, remember for every child that you have, your womb was the first ap apartment where that child lived before that child saw the son of this world. I'm like, uh, really? He said, yeah. It was what you ate that child ate, what you drink that child drink. You were the source of life of that child. The air you breathe makes that child alive. So even though that child is now grown, is no more inside your body, he said, but what was cut off when that child was born? You know, we mothers, when the child is born, the umbilical cord will be cut off, isn't it? Because when, watch it, I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing, I just pray that God will help you to get the revelation as I got it when he taught, taught me this. You know, when you push the baby out, the baby will come out, but it will fall back because there is umbilical cord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the umbilical cord that transmits every food, every drink into that baby, isn't it? That baby, even though you have delivered, it has come out of your womb, but it's not really free from you. Until the, the doctor or the nurse do what? Cut off the umbilical cord. And here, what God said to me, he said, the umbilical cord that was cut when the baby is born is natural one. The spiritual one will never be cut off. I pause a little bit for you to think and just take it in because that will happen to me when he taught me that. Said so the spiritual one cannot be cut off. That's why a prayer of a mother for her children is very powerful. So he taught me that and when I want to pray for any of my child or my children, I place my two hands in my womb and begin to call that child by name. I say, this is your first apartment you live. And you cannot go far. Natural is cut off, but spiritually I'm holding you, baby. Devil have no right to touch you. Devil, you have no right to mess with any of my child because they are in me still. I'm holding them tight because that is the mandate God has given me to be an avenue to bring that child into this world. So devil, as long as it's not you that bring this child through me into the world, you have no right to take this child away from me or out of the world. I tell you what, it works like a charm. Whenever there is trouble, that's the way I pray. And God always never fail me. And I teach mothers this prayer. If you believe, you do. If you don't believe, it's no more. So I'm just sharing my secret, what God taught me about motherhood. Amen. Yeah. Mothers are the one that in every family make peace among their children. Any household that the children are having issue, oh, this child doesn't talk to each other. That mother is a weak mother. No mother should side any of her child when two children are having problem. I will repeat myself because I've seen this so much in being in my position, I cancel so many people. So I know what I'm saying. I'm not assuming, I'm telling you what I have seen and handled. When your children are having problem among each other, do not do what? Take side. Be in the middle and tell them the gospel truth. This person you're right, this person you're wrong. But at the same time, you are my children. I do not want any of you as long as I live to hate each other. Forgive each other. 
you are one. Your friend outside cannot be better than your brother inside. So this is the pillar. The mother is the bond maker. The mother brings the children together. It does not matter who is right or wrong. Mother should not have favor rights. This is one problem we have been creating for our children. There will be no favorite child. You bring them all the same time, the same how many months you carry them. Everyone is favorite. So that when they notice that, things will go easier. So right now, I want to pray. I want us to come to the prayers time. I want every mother here that is hearing my voice to know that God appreciates you. You may feel that you didn't do much work. Don't think that way. Motherhood is not an easy road. But God appreciates you. He knows your sacrifices. Whether your children recognize that or not, whether your husband recognizes it or not, the almighty God wants me to let you know that he appreciates you. But he wants you to be stronger in your faith. The same faith you use to carry that baby for nine months. The same faith you use to push that baby as be sleepless night for how many, go to school, do that. That same faith, God wants you to continue. He's by your side. So I want the mothers to come to the altar right now. 